I had on my report. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Okay, I'm going to move to uh, item F on business. FC Schools Place and Organization. We reviewed these policies last month, and uh, I know we were bringing some things back. Um, no, no way to beat around the bush. This is a hot topic in our community. Um, I, I, I've got a few things, if you will, bear with me, that I'm going to read. And I think it, at least it, it, it's things that we've heard from our school board attorney. It's things that uh, <coughs> we may or may not be aware of, uh, but I do think they're, I, I think they're relevant. Um, basically, uh, the Equal Access Act, it says, what triggers the Equal Access Act? says the creation of a limited open forum is created whenever a public secondary school provides an opportunity for one or more non-curriculum related student groups. Uh, that's what we operate under today. Um, one of the other questions and answers here is to what schools does this act apply? The act applies only to public secondary schools as defined by state law that receive federal financial assistance. And uh, we obviously receive federal financial assistance uh, between the state and our federal project somewhere in the neighborhood of $4 million. Um, question, question and answer is, must a school board create a limited open forum for students? The answer is no. The local school, school board has exclusive authority to determine whether it will create or maintain a limited open forum. However, if a school has a limited open forum, it may not discriminate against a student group because of the content, content of the group's speech. Just a, just a couple more. May a school establish regulations for meetings that take place in its limited open forum? The answer is yes. The act does not take away a school's authority to establish reasonable times, place, and manner regulating for its limited open forum. Uh, what does student initiated mean? It means that students themselves are seeking permission to meet and they will direct and control the meetings. Teachers and other school employees may not initiate nor direct such meetings, nor may outsiders. May outsiders attend meetings? <coughs> yes. If invited by the students and if the school does not have a policy barring all non-school persons. However, the non-school persons may not direct, conduct, control, or regularly attend activities at the students' group. May teachers be present during student, student meetings? Yes, but there are important limitations. Um, teachers or other employees are to be Present at student, student religious meetings only in a non-participatory capacity. Uh, may any group be excluded? Yes. Student groups that are unlawful or that materially or substantially interfere with the orderly conduct of educational activities may, exclude, may, may be excluded. However, a student group cannot be denied equal access simply because its ideals are unpopular. Freedom of speech includes the ideals the majority may find repugnant. I just thought it was appropriate to at least read those things to know what's allowed and what's not allowed. Um, with, with that, we'll go back to visit our, our, our policies. I know we, we asked to bring uh, some of these back to... Uh, Back to us, and I know that you've compiled a list too. That uh... I did. I, I put several things on there, and I, I failed to ask Patty to put the, um, the actual policy. So I'll pass this to you, and that way you'll have a copy of the board policy as it exists. That was posted last time. It was my failure not to get that on there this afternoon. So I apologize for that. But I did send. Um, there's a, a list of the community use of facilities. Uh, I compiled what we have here at Central Office. We have a form that anybody, any organization who wants to use our facilities has to fill that out and complete it. 
uh, and there's a process they work through for approval to use our facilities. So the first page is all the countywide use. Um, there are two additional pages of all of the school use uh, by these organizations within our community. Uh, the other sheet or the other list that I also provided you know, are the, um, the club information for academic and non-academic clubs at the secondary level. I had shared with you earlier the ones at um, two high schools. This also includes the two middle schools as well as numbers of participation, uh, student members in each of those clubs, when they meet, where they meet, and just a short description of the clubs. So that was more for, again, just informational purposes. I also sent you the, um, the the criteria revised, and I'm still not crazy about the wording on this, so I think there's still some areas that we can probably do a little better uh, to clear up some of the language. Uh, I, I think there's still some work that needs to be done on that, on the uh, criteria. And then the administrative procedures for the application, I think, also probably needs a little bit of work. It's probably closer to being uh, accurate, but needs to truly reflect the criteria uh, as we go through the process of getting that updated. I have a question. And this might be one. It might, it might have more than one answer, which is the case in a lot of legal kind of things, because I think that you have to uh, be honest about what you're, what you're dealing with uh, in any club or organization. And I think that you have to be very careful about political activism in the public schools because that's not what they're for. But my, my first question is <coughs> if, if, and that's a big if, and I understand that, this school board chose to go to a closed form school system. What is the connection between a closed form school system with the, um, I guess, regulating or reducing? to just curriculum-based clubs and our facility usage policy because I don't make that connection. And what I'm trying to say is I don't make the connection between the Leo Club and Franklin County Big League Football. They can sign a user agreement based somewhat in monetary value to use the middle school football field. So, I mean, what I'm saying is if you, if you go one way, does that mean nobody uses the facilities except school well, I, first of all, I will not profess to be a lawyer, so I'm going to tell you what I've been advised from our legal counsel, um, because I had the same kinds of questions. If if the board elected to go to a closed forum, then the community use of the facilities, which is, includes Pee Wee football at the old high school stadium, <coughs> includes the recreational basketball leagues at Townsend, those would not be able to use our facilities. It closes all... Um, all board property is basically off limits uh, to include the 4-H club. 4-H club makes it that good. Well, it's not, but they come into the schools. Right. So, and there's after I, school I events. I on that today. I asked Chris about how many of our kids are involved in 4-H. <coughs> it's, it's like 2,300. So Would you call and check on that, or, or how oh, you? I did. I, I, I asked, asked this me. question. I asked the question. What would be the problem? Is it the county on that football field that instead of us? Well, there would not be a problem then because well, it wouldn't uh, be board property. Because, and the point I'm driving at here is, I think that, that, that is, we haven't really put out on the table what's going on. And we all know the you know the, these organizations that have an outside agenda other than. Maybe what the majority of this county feels like to be in the best interest of their children. And taking that to heart, I did some real looking and some real searching and some real research about what's really going on with the formation of the U.S. Club at Franklin County High School. And here's what I found. I found that actually what it is is a subset of a group called the GLSEN, which is a, an acronym for the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network. And you can't deny that the two are correlated because when you pull up their website, the first thing you see in the bottom left-hand corner is a former GS club, GSA club today with their flag. So that doesn't work for me. That the two would not be correlated is what I'm saying. And just to give you an idea, here's the kind of legislation that, that's being supported by these organizations. The GLS, the, excuse me, the GLSEM, <coughs> you have to understand... This is a bill that was put to the floor in the state legislature in South Dakota, but it's also coming to the floor of the legislature in the state of Tennessee. And 
this organization called for the South Dakota governor, Dennis Dugard, to veto House Bill 1008, but pay attention to what House Bill 1008 said. It says in here, because this was off their website, in order to prevent the discriminatory bill from becoming law, but here's what the law actually said. The, or the bill, I'm sorry. The bill would have required transgender, non-conforming students to use the restrooms and locker rooms that correspond with their sex assigned at birth instead of their gender identity. I, I'm not sure we're ready to go down that road. Um, so you have that to take into consideration. And, you know, I've heard a lot of uh, explaining about non-bullying or, or acceptance, and, and I understand all that. But, once again, when you look at another part of this website, the diversity statement with the GLSEM opposed to, it, it blatantly states, are opposed to heterosexism, homophobia, biophobia, transphobia, and other forms of oppression. Fair enough. But when in practice, or translated into practical action, what it means is that GLSEN uses curriculum, which the GSA has a curriculum, it's plain on their website, as well as a syllabus, books and other campus-wide programs and initiatives to familiarize students with the idea that homosexual, bisexual, and transgender behavior, including cross-dressing and sex changes, are normal and worthy of being embraced. And I'm only one guy, and I've only got one opinion, but, you know, the people living in this county, this money paid for these schools where these kids go to school, I think maybe we'll check and see what they think, too, because... I know you get into legal things, and I know the law locks you down to some, some certain things you have to do. I'm just not sure in this case that it locks us down as tight as we've been advised it does, because some of the legal advice that I got is not the same legal advice we got at our last board meeting. And I know, no disrespect, two lawyers can look at the same law and get two different answers. I understand that. But I think that, that this shows that this is way more than something that's just an anti-bullying organization. And to be very blunt, uh, for, for my take on this, what it is is an attempt to infiltrate the public school system with GLS, GLSEN and LGBT ideals. And, and I, I just, I'm not sure that I'm ready to go along with that. I guess my question would be, uh, Chris brought up a good point with the, the depression and all. Uh, speaking to one of our principals, um, they, they brought up that you know, we have sponsors who are required for these clubs, <clears throat> excuse me, or student organizations. I would, uh, I'd like to know what our liability is on it if we have sponsors. I mean, is there any type of requirement that, you, that sponsors of clubs who are dealing with uh, depression or kids who are prone to suicide, are they qualified to deal with these kids? Should something bad happen, you know, um, what, what is our liability on this? I, I'll ask. I wouldn't know. Yeah, I, I know you're uh, a yeah. lawyer, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll check. I would also, if, while you're asking, <laughs> if something is a non-curriculum-based club and it has a curriculum, isn't that a, a... I need some clarity about that. Okay. Because to me, that's an agenda. Mm -hmm. I feel it's important to call this board's attention to something. At this board's June 9, 2014 meeting, it reaffirmed policy, board policy 4.802, which is the title Student Equal Access Limited Public Forum. There were some minor revisions that were made to that board, that policy. That policy was, had been initially issued in February 15, 2001. Most of the people on this current board 
or on the board when this this policy 4.802 was reaffirmed in June of 2014. The only thing that has changed since this board adopted and revised 4.802 is that there has been a group formed at the high school with, it, with which some people disagree about the viewpoint <clears throat> being expressed there. That is the only thing that has changed. I just want to caution members of this board of what the implications are for the board, for the school district, and for each of you individually, financially, should you choose to change course when there's only been one change. Individually, financially, I don't think you just Was that a lot threat? No. No. You be quiet. I'm sorry. This board has protection, and when we're doing the school activities, we all have protection. And I just got through reading that says the local school board has the exclusive authority to determine whether it will create or maintain. I, that means you can do it at will. I understand that. I understand exactly what you just read. But this what what your what this board is considering or what some members of this board is considering, some members of this board are considering, goes beyond what you read in that document. Well, I, I, I think that would be something that uh, I, I mean I, I think we all duly note that, but I think Nobody can deny that we've been uh, bombarded with emails from the community. We're each elected to be our representative for each of our districts. Um, and we're the district's voice. Um, that's why we're having this in an open meeting tonight. Here are the ramifications if we go down this road. No clubs other than the curriculum state mandate uh, or curriculum based. Uh, at this point, we don't know, but we've been advised nobody can use our school property. And, and we have Beta Club as part of that shutdown. 4-H may be part of that shutdown. <coughs> uh, but I still think uh, we are still representing the community we live in. And if that's public knowledge and we're still being asked to do that, I think that's why we said in the and these laws are created to protect both the interests of the majority opinion as well as minority opinion. It's part of living in a democratic society that's based on laws. I'd just like to say that, that in recognizing the wishes or the, the emails and the contacts that we've had, that, that I feel like we need to get every bit of information that we can out to the public, that they should not be in the dark about any part of this. And one of the things that I did today was just add the number of students that would be impacted if we closed non-academic <coughs> clubs, and it was over 1,100. Now, some of these students may be in more than one club, and without coming up with an exact number, um, we'd have to cross-reference the membership in every club. But when I look at the membership, it's over 1,100 students at um, Franklin County High School, Hubbard High School, and um, the two middle schools that would lose access to something they're participating in. Now. And that I offer just as information. That's over 1,100 students. When you look at the number of organizations, and that was just up, um, that attachment was just up on the screen, and you add the number of organizations that use our facilities, that number will, will add, and you can count them to over 80 organizations. Now, that doesn't include the number of people who participate in these organizations. So when we talk about changing a policy, then we're talking about 
affecting thousands of people in, in Franklin County. And I, as, as the public shares with, with board members their opinion, I want them to know as much as I can offer them about where, where this might lead. Um, the, the other thing that, that has come up, Dr. Lomas, is that this particular um, situation has been tested in court mm -hmm. and that we, we being a, person, a group that might decide to do that, it's my understanding has never prevailed. And I'd like to, I personally, because I haven't seen them, would like to see some of the case history and see what was involved in it. Um, just for my own information and to, and to share with, with community members who are interested in, in reading that. Um, what do you mean by that that hasn't prevailed? That it, it was my understanding, is my understanding that when an organization, a board, has changed the policy from limited open to closed, and it was clearly targeting one group, that if that, go, and it goes through the Office of Civil Rights, it does not go to your local county court. It's a civil rights issue. And in the two years or so that it takes for that, that particular case to travel through the courts, that, that the school boards, the school systems, have not prevailed in being allowed to do that. Now, I'd like to research that myself because I'm, I'm working on hearsay and that's not anything I, I would absolutely know. But I think we all need to know more about that because what's involved in that litigation process? And Dr. Lowe, you might just speak to that a little bit. Should we find ourselves in that situation? What's involved in it? Um, Again, I'm not a lawyer, so I I, I'm just basing what I say on, on the uh, advice of our board attorney, and, and you all were privy to those same discussions as well. But um, I can get more information for you on that and bring it back to you uh, about particular court cases and the findings and, and that. I, I think that would be interesting okay. um, information and pertinent information before any kind of decision is made. I just have, I have a question, a clarification question. Do you have the policy uh, in your hands that can go on the board? The student clubs and organization. 6.702. Number one. Student organizations are an extension of the academic curriculum and are attended to complement the basic instructional program. <coughs> to what does that pertain? How, how, is that in, how are you all interpreting that particular sentence? And does all of our organizations meet that criteria and it does it even obtain to all the organizations, the clubs. Well, if you're asking to interpret that sentence, it means that any student organization or club you have should have some kind of uh, value back to the academic structure at the school. In other words, a math club would have obviously have some kind of academic value to the math class. Or the guitar club to the music. Pretty right. Those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, the per there are two policies at play here, and we've been focused on this policy, 6.702. Well, 4.802 raises it is a, um, raises it and creates another means by which the student. It says schools may allow students to form non-curricular clubs or groups that meet before, during, and or after the school day. Requests to form such clubs or groups shall not be denied based upon the religious nature or beliefs of proposed club or groups. 
if permitted, school administrators shall ensure that all clubs and groups have the same abilities to access facilities and advertise their meetings. This policy was adopted to implement the Equal Access Act. That's what this board did back in 2001. That's what this board did in June 2014. And it, it creates what we have here. You know, you, one could interpret student clubs and organizations as applying to curricular or non-curricular or extracurricular clubs that have some link to the um, to the instructional curriculum, the school day curriculum. But 4.802 allows for the creation of other student-led non-curricular clubs. So are you saying they're in conflict with no, each other? No, they're not in conflict, but they need to be, they need to be read together to, to encompass every single group or club that exists at um, the two high schools and the middle schools. I, I think but Adam says may, not shall. May, it does say may, but it's, what it does is if you allow it, the next sentence, request to form such clubs or groups shall not be denied based upon the religious nature of beliefs of the proposed club or group. This comes straight from the Equal Access Act. This language is consistent with that, and the fact that we have allowed um, some groups to form under this policy means we can't discriminate based on the content or viewpoint expressed in that group's speech. I, I think in the in the one Ms. Hopkins is talking about, I think those two sentences, one and two, are only relevant if you're in a closed forum. I think that's the only time that sentence comes into play. Because uh, it's just like as an equal access protects the other yeah. student initiated, they don't have to be curriculum based. As, as, writ as written, I would agree with that. Well, as an individual board member, it is my understanding that the principal of the schools, along with the very next sentence addresses and the faculty, and the student body representative shall approve all clubs and organizations within the school of what happened in this particular case. It is up to this board. All we do is make policy. We hire one person, and that's Dr. Lemons. So I just want to, I want to be clear. I'm not coming in one way or the other, but I want to make sure that I'm, I'm voting on a policy. I want to know what, for sure what that policy means. That, Not just for this, but for any future. Right. And I think, personally, that this particular policy in lines four and five somehow needs to include the director of schools in the approval process. I, I mean, if you, look, if you look at the way the latest club was formed, I, I got a call from the newspaper. That's the way I found out because it doesn't go through the board. No. So I, I think we need to at least know uh, that you know okay. or the director of schools knows what, what clubs are being, being formed. So do you want me to bring back some language on that then for the board meeting to add to that? Is that what that, That's intending? my opinion on, okay. this, on this thing. <clears throat> All right. I would ask for a, a definition between organization and political political activist organization. If there's any difference in the two, I'm sorry. I'm, what was that? If there's a difference between student clubs or organizations and political activist organization, what's the definition or the difference between the two? Um, so I think that's that's pretty pretty obvious. Another question that I might have there too is, I know um, <clears throat> Kevin, I think when you were going over some ground out there at the very beginning and saying that secondary schools who receive federal funding fall under that 
If this board chose to go to a closed form, is that going to affect elementary as well as secondary? Or does this act not speak to elementary? My understanding, and I think this is consistent with what Kevin read, is that the Equal Access Act only requires, uh, if only applies to secondary schools that receive public funding. So it does not it does not require that if you have a limited open forum at the high school, it does not require that you have one at an elementary school. It also does not require that you have one. At a middle school, and I'm a, I don't know if I don't know where the cutoff is off the top of my head for state law where secondary. Well, that's that's our secondary, secondary middle and high school. I think because, it's so it could be. Yes. Yes. Could be yes. 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 So okay, so then so then it would not apply to K through five. Okay, what I'm asking is kind of the opposite that's scenario of that. If we chose the closed form, does that apply to? Oh, for yeah, elementary it's school. not just. So it would, would that apply? I won't ask it. It may not be what you're saying. That's what I'm asking. But would it affect elementary? That's what I'm asking. Well, the I'm elementary is already effectively closed for. Well, I guess from the standpoint, let me just give you a simplified example of that. And if you chose a closed form, and elementary say is, is exempt from that, then then these you know when we talk about 4-H club which is really an impact on the zone. Those kids are all involved in that. Is that going to prohibit them meeting in the elementary setting? If you bring a price, it just tell me a price. Well, I, mean, I, I, I think it's confusing, and I think, I mean, I think it's hard because equal access says specifically secondary. Yeah, that's but what I'm I, asking. I don't know that that... Pretend to know that we don't want no place. Well, secondary is 7 through 21. 6 through 12. 6 through 12, now we're in middle school. So you're but talking about 6 through 12. If you close your campus, and the list that I have closed every what campus, I have is closed every campus, and some of, the, some of the community activities take place in our elementary schools, then I would think 4-H being a community organization, and our campus is closed, I think they can't come. But what Clay Joe is saying is it would just be a closed form for secondary. secondary. So then all of these activities that go on in Franklin County using our campuses could continue to go on in our elementary schools? That's a good question. That's what I want to know. That's a question. Okay. So we need to define secondary? Uh, or or is the equal that. access me, act only pertain to secondary? Right. I'll, I'll clarify that and get that information to you. Just how many students did you say? Please, you know, what, for 4-H? For 4-H? Uh, the number I was given my call to ask today was 2,300. So we can add those to the 1,100 that I have. Add that to the 1,100. So now we're at 3,400, which is over half of our student population. Mm -hmm. You don't have to close it. I'm going to remove you if you speak out again. You know the rules. It's this is a board meeting in a public setting. But we don't no. know yet. Sorry, we don't know. We don't know that those elementary 4-H students could not continue just like we don't know. That's my point. That's what that I would. We can keep on with the junior program. Doctor Lovis is going to run that down. Oh well, I'll sign down. And my point is, Mr. Guest, that we need all of this information before we make I a agree. decision. I agree. And the form, an informed decision is a good decision. Well, and I, and I said that from the outset. I think the public needs to know. Because, I mean, we, we, we all get the same emails, or at least we, we, they're all addressed to us. You, you know, we, 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 we've gotten some for support, we've gotten some for shut down. And quite frankly, it's not, it's not as easy as just doing one or the other. It's, it's, it's not. Well, it is, but some people that you speak with, too, I mean, this is true of some of the people I've spoken with, um, you know, the shutdown sounds pretty really great, and when you mention the fact that, look, here's the baggage with that, then you've got another conversation going on. I just want to make sure that whatever decision we make is the best decision that we can make for the kids of our community. That's all I want. Thank you, for sure.
is the right decision. Any other questions or any other uh, that we can put on uh, Dr. Long's list to bring back? <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, was it in the you when we was working on are already there that students were not allowed to recruit in these clubs. Where did I see that? Was that the new one we were working it's on? It's in the, uh, the club organization. The process, wasn't it? Procedures and process. The business It says no solicitation for membership. Uh, that's in the that's, yeah, it's in this document. And that's an administrative procedure for 6.702 as it stands right now. And that, you know, taking literally no solicitation. That's the new means, one. What? That's the one we're revising, or looking at revising, maybe revising. Is that the way it's currently written? Or is that Which one? With the, this one right here? About the solicitation. That's the procedures. Yes. That was the corrections that you all gave me last month. Uh, we went back and incorporated those. Okay. So that's just so it's, it's well, that's the second really version not. of it, but it's based off of the existing policy. policy. That's, that's no, 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 that, that's an administrative procedure. That's it's an it's it's the purpose of that is to implement policy. But what we're saying is that you, you still could be a working process, though. They don't have this at the school level, right? No, they don't. Okay. And that's we so haven't voted on that. It's right. Boy, so I mean, it would price. seem it would seem to me at, at this point in time it's. You know, whether any change you made to procedure or to policy would not be something that could be implemented until next year. Until next school year? Until yes, yes, for next school year. As I looked at this again, there were a couple of things that I highlighted. Um, the second bullet, 10 students to establish a club, mm -hmm. but it doesn't say... 10 students to maintain a club, and there were some on our list that didn't have that many. That's just an FYI. Um, and down about a third of the way, um, once a quarter, a school administrator will attend a meeting of each established club to ensure the meeting agenda is, agenda is followed, and I, I wonder if that's with enough regularity. Um, that would be three times a year if you look at a quarter system, and okay. I wonder if if, um, given our discussion, if we would want to increase that supervision of all clubs. And finally, right at the bottom, it said all clubs and organizations will, will be reviewed every five years by the principal and the leadership team, and, and I, I think a more frequent review. Um, a Friday should be in. Yes, I do too. I think annually you need to look at what the clubs are doing. Well, I'll, I'll throw this out too to, this, to, to put another one on your list. But, but according to this question and answer, it says, may schools require a minimum number of students to form a non-curriculum related club? Not if it limits the rights of the students, the group of students. Care must be exercised that the school cannot discriminate against numerically small student groups <clears throat> that wish to establish a club. If the number of clubs begin to tax the available space in a particular school, one teacher might be used to monitor several small groups and meetings. The key is to be flexible and accommodate. So, do we need then to take this ten? I, that's what I would. I would. I would pass that through our attorney because, according to this, I don't think the number will hold up. And we have clubs in existence, according to this hand, this, this list that don't have it. I would, um, <coughs> I would take a different take on the once once a quarter observation by a school administrator. Um, that is, if, if, if you take, um, I think I have the numbers. That's a lot of work. That, it's a <laughs> lot, that's a lot of work. I mean, you, that's you. That's you have another round of evaluation. That's that's um, if you have roughly at Franklin County High School, I think it's roughly twenty. It is. 10 academic clubs and 17 non-academic clubs. If you're, that's, if you're requiring that of all academic clubs, that's 27 times four per year. I think if you look they don't meet in the summertime, do they? Uh, three. 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 So it'll be three. So three. Yeah. 
27 times 3, still that's uh, 81 visits. Divided by how many administrators? Four. 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 So it's, it's, still, it's still 20 a person. Um, and you also, we have to remember that you have a faculty advisor at that meeting. That advisor's responsibility is to, as an employee of the school district, is to see that policy is being adhered to, that, that students are behaving in accordance with conduct policy, um, that they're, every single policy that applies, just about every single policy that governs student behavior during the school day applies during these club meetings. Um, I would suggest that if you have, if you have a, a doubt about a faculty advisor's ability to monitor the group, the concern is with that specific employee, not in terms of that you need more supervision. Now, if there is an issue, you could have, there's nothing that says an administrator, you know, can't go to a club that is, has been experienced difficulties, however you would, would imagine that. You know, if, they, if one group has been particularly boisterous such that they are disrupting other groups, you know, that are meeting in the classroom next door, that might be a reason for an administrator to visit more than once a quarter. Well, and, and, I, I, and I might appreciate input from the administrators at these schools to see, you know, how they would respond to that. And some of these clubs meet in the morning and some in the afternoon. So if you're looking at 20 visits per quarter um, and you have 60 school days in a quarter and then you look at morning and afternoon, I, I don't think it's as taxing as, as it might sound. And again, I'm just throwing that out for discussion. I'm not locked into that. But, but I do think when we have this amount of the, the, these clubs meeting and students involved, thousand students that even if it's a roaming administrator there in the afternoon looking in on clubs and so forth it, it, it just might add a comfort level to the community well, and a comfort say, level to parents. They don't have to say the whole meeting. I mean it could be a lot of walk-in evaluation. To me what would be interesting if there's some clarification between student club and organizational political activist group. I'm really I'm pleased not to get that. I, mean, I would I would second your your statement about getting input from school administrators. I think anything that we um, put together in terms of uh, administrative procedures should have the input of administrators. I think it should also have the input of faculty members that are currently advising clubs. Like how how does this impact the club that I'm advising or the clubs that I'm advising and 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 how could that be tweaked? They're the stakeholders, they're the people that are going to be responsible on it on a daily or weekly basis implementing this pop, these procedures. We need to make sure that they are workable. Um, I think one, uh, another concern that I have about these, um, the way the uh, administrative procedure is written right now is that there are certain things that um, they, they, they don't establish objective criteria, um, and I'll just give one or two examples. The first one um, is about, I don't know, the fifth or sixth bullet point for the top, where it says um, the sponsor is to be present at all club meetings to monitor to keep discussions in a positive professional atmosphere. Um, pot, what is positive to in professional atmosphere could, is potentially subjective. Um, I think, you know, something that would be more appropriate would be something to make sure that the meeting is conducted in compliance with um, applicable board policy, district policies, administrative procedures, and school policies. There, there, you, have, there you have some objective criteria that you can refer to and that they're enforceable as opposed to something that is well, what does positive mean? What um, the other thing is is I think that there are, there are a lot of good reasons for clubs to keep minutes. Um, 
but I don't think it's necessary for a lot of these clubs, for example, the guitar club, to keep minutes at every meeting. So one of the suggestions that I would have is that, um, that, that there be a requirement that minutes be kept for business meetings. And you define a business meeting as something where there's, there's an electing, an official, electing officers, you know, dealing with financial transactions on behalf of the club, making policy decisions, planning trips, et cetera, that type of thing. Um, and that there be a requirement that each club have a certain number of business meetings per quarter, um, that there be minutes. But then you kind of get into electing officers. I, mean, our, I didn't see it where we, I didn't see where we mandated that they elected the officers. There, there isn't. But okay, I, if you get into only during business meetings, now you got to have officers. Well, who's going to keep the minutes without an officer? I mean, so it, that, I mean that might be another another thing is that to, 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 are the clubs required to have officers? Is there supposed to be, you know, a president and a secretary? If there's money, if there's money being there's handled, money, yeah, the, if there's money being handled, should there be a treasurer? Um, there may not be a need for a treasurer at a certain club. Maybe the guitar club doesn't need a treasurer, but I can think, I mean, a lot of other clubs probably do and should have a treasurer. I, I, don't, see any, I don't see anything here about a regular of attendance, and I think that's, that's um, they have sign students sign sheet. Sheet. That is a student sign sheet. sheet. But I, I don't see, I, I, I still think that all clubs should be required to at least turn in a bullet point list of what took place during that meeting. I don't care if it's played, learn how to play. Start where they have. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, there needs to be a bullet list of what took place in that meeting. Well, if you have 27 clubs that you don't have, that you, you really don't have control of what's going on in your building. Well, well you have no clue what's going on. I, 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 think think we, some kind of I think we addressed that with Chuck in our board meeting. He, he addressed the minutes, mm -hmm. and he thought yeah, that's good idea. they all should. I, anything else here that we need to uh, have Dr. Thomas bring back? I guess my question, the question is, is it not be able for this? Because there are a lot of questions out there, and there's... Um, and probably a lot of research that uh, we've asked Dr. Lunas to do. There's several board members have stated that um, that they would like to do additional research on their own. Um, and there's only seven days before our next meeting. Um, <coughs> you know, one thing that I had thought might be reasonable is that board policies, uh, section six policies, are up for review anyways in May. <coughs> um, and that, you know, we can't really take a vote in terms of taking something off the agenda for, for next week's meeting. As, at this meeting, we can't do that as a board, but um, that might be a more reasonable time period to address these concerns um, in May. I'd like to see a lift on there for the Monday night meeting, and then if something is not I guess kind of hanging out there, if you will, we can always take a look and move it out. Well, but I'd like to see this on the agenda for Monday night. I think you can just even leave it open for discussion. Yeah. I don't think it's something that you have to determine. This is going to be the vote. Right. I, I won't get every bit of information. Well, the public has a right to know. It, because of all the emails we're getting, I don't know about this of you, but they're coming in today. And, and yeah. that, that was my point, that, that we are getting a lot of input from the community, and we appreciate that. And they um, do have a right. They, they, They're they the should, ones that... They should do that, but at the same time, they should be informed as we should be informed about. It should be informed decisions and informed requests, and if there's any information lacking, and as it's, it's, uh, just said, when she's spelled out the bigger picture sometimes uh, they need to know all of the ramifications one way or the other. We just need to get all the information out there and it perhaps can happen this week and it may take a month. It, it may take two months. We don't know. Oh, I think our friends in the media will take care of <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anything else on, on that? 
If not, we'll move the item to the ESBA legislative agenda.